I've been doing more and more reflow work and I thought it was about time I looked at a reflow oven and seeing that there are lots of projects online so I thought I would have a go so I brought a small oven I saw that having a smaller one was easier to maintain the heat and uh, brought a few parts so we have the solid state relay a small power supply a teensy a thermocouple module and a small screen so just like all the others we're going to use the solid state relay to turn the elements on and off and then we'll monitor the temperature with the thermocouple so in this first part I'm just going to show the development that I've been doing and I've been doing all my testing with a light bulb just to simulate a heat source so that I can do the testing at home um, because the first time that I tried to do some reflow with the oven I set the board on fire and nearly had to evacuate the office the next stage is to make this prototype a bit more permanent and have some proto boards to do that and then I have to think about is this going to go at the side and take these controls out or am I going to just put it in a separate module that fits on the side let's have a look at the software that I've got programmed into the system and quickly how it works This is my prototype for controlling the reflow oven. And we have a Teensy 3.2 with a broken USB port. So it was a good choice to use this. The Teensy also works at 3.2 volt to match the screen. The screen runs off SPI. We also have an Adafruit thermocouple module and then a rotary encoder. The thermocouple module stops the rotary encoder from working when you try to read both at the same time so that's something that may be able to fix in software but it's not a big deal i then have one of these modules which will take ac in and give 5 volt out so when we eventually put it into the toaster oven this will be used to power these devices and then my heat source is this bulb the thermocouple is attached to the top so that we can simulate the oven. If we just turn the rotary encoder, we can flick between the options. Setup doesn't do anything, but eventually that will be a way to set the profile for the reflow. So if we go into dry, we can set the target temperature and then we can set the period. So this would just be if you've used an ultrasonic cleaner and you wanted to dry off a board. Once we press it, it will start to work. So the bulb is switching on and off to, in to develop heat and that would be our toaster oven. I'm just going to move that out of shot. You can see that it's still working. So we have the time that it's been running, the target temperature, the current temperature and the room temperature which is just read from the thermocouple module and at the moment it's in preheat, it's in preheat mode and it's timed on, timed off and then we have a simple graph that shows what it's doing. So we're still in preheat mode because it hasn't reached our target drying temperature and we can choose to do this slowly or fast depending on how long we turn the bulb or the heater on and then off. You could just leave it on and it will ramp up as quickly as possible. We don't want to risk damaging anything so we can control that and again like I say we'll be able to do that in the setup. So we're currently at 43 degrees and we need to get to 50 
before we start the drying cycle. So we're now at 50. Our mode has changed to dry and the timer has reset. So this will now run to whatever time you set when you started this. You can see also that the mode is changing. So at the moment it's over the temperature so the element is switched off. When it goes below the temperature it will go back to timed on, timed off. Depending on how quickly the oven eats up I can change these options so that it maintains the temperature in, in the best way. So we're still above temperature and we're still in off mode. Now we've gone below temperature and we're switching between timed mode and off mode. And again, we don't want to be switching this on and off too quick because it's not good for the solid state relay. So once this is put in the oven, it will need calibrating again to, to get it working how I want to. At any point, we can just click the button and it will go back to the menu. If there are any problems with the thermocouple module, it will also quit back to the menu. So if the, mod if the thermocouple stops reporting a temperature or there's a problem, something gets disconnected, it won't just carry on heating, it will switch off, go back to the menu. So let, we'll just let that cool down. And the next mode is reflow. So reflow is where we want to make a profile. So we want to gradually heat up so that um, we're not just blasting the PCB with a high temperature because it will warp. So we gradually build up and then we get to the point where it, it stays there for a bit to get the flux going and you can build up again to the temperature for the actual reflow, maintain that and then let it cool down. At the moment I've just got this in a four step array and it has options to work as a temperature mode or as a timed mode. So in temperature mode it will move to the next step when it gets to its temperature. In timed mode it will just carry on maintaining that temperature until it gets to the end of the time. We could add as many steps into this as we want to but at the moment it just builds up to 60, maintains 60, quickly builds up to 70, maintains 70 and eventually we'll get this so that you can change it in setup. Let's run that in reflow mode now. We are heating and we need to get up to 60 degrees. So we nearly finished the heating cycle. As soon as it gets to 60, it will maintain the 60 degrees for a set period. So we've now changed to timed mode. So just like before, it's going between switching on and off. And then when it goes over temperature, it just stays off until it goes below. It's also switching on a lot quicker because of how I programmed it. I think this runs until it gets to 100 on the time. And then it should want to heat up until it gets to 70. And then it stays on to heat up a lot quicker. So we're now heating until it gets to 70. And you can see that the light is staying on, so it's heating up as quickly as we can. Note that the mode says stay on.
So now we've reached 70, we're going to maintain that time, which would be our reflow time. Note how quickly it's turning on and off. Again, that's part of the programming and can be set to whatever needs to be set. I've actually found that it struggles to maintain the temperature turning on and off this quickly. So there we go, that's our reflow profile finished and it goes back to the menu. The next step in this project is to make this more permanent. I have some of this double sided dev board. So I'm going to put that behind the screen and then mount all of the other parts at the back of it and then um, decide whether this is going to go into the oven or if it's going to sit on the module at the side of it.